I believe and trust according to your word that you're blessing him already. And Lord, because you're blessing, because you're blessing him right now, we're saying thank you. Thank you for touching him right now. Thank you for blessing him. Thank you for removing his doubts. Thank you, Lord, for letting him know that he is your child. And we stand on that and we believe that right now. We're standing on your word. Lord, for the voices that are saying, no, that's not true. We rebuke them in Jesus' name. Yes, God. He's the apple of that night. Thank you, Lord. There's a place in your heart that's reserved specifically for you. Lord, bless him in Jesus' name. The people of God say amen. And amen. Come on, put your hands together and bless him, Lord. Let each one of us be able to experience you for ourselves. 
Whatever you have in store for your children, we ask now that you bless us. It's in Jesus' name that we ask it all. And all God's children say amen. Amen. A few years ago, a story seemed to be on the forefront of the news. I'm referring to the story of Y'all gonna be seated. I'm sorry. They look so good. They be on their post. Amen. And y'all gonna fit in right with this sermon too. Amen. I'm talking about Bo Bergdorf. You remember the soldier that was captured for five years, and and then uh, some say he deserted. Some said a whole lot of things. But we're talking about being held captive in Afghanistan for five years. This story has been filled with controversy. Many were furious about the fact that the United States government negotiated with terrorists and getting uh, Bo Bergdahl back and letting five individuals go to their army. It had also been reported by members of his company, his own company platoon, that he was a deserter. In fact, it was documented that he had walked away from his platoon twice before. And as I recall this story, I couldn't help but think about all the Christian soldiers who are in prison today. It has often been said that the Christian's life is not a playground, but a battlefield. We who are born again in the Lord are soldiers in God's army. This is mentioned to uh, Paul in Paul's letter to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. He says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a sound soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that war, no man that goes out to fight, entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. This morning I would like to ask you just take a moment and look around. Look at the empty pews here today. The empty seats that were once filled our sanctuary are not representative of lost people. They represent soldiers who are no longer on the battlefield. Too many times we are guilty of looking at our missing members as saying, well, they backslid. The Bible speaks to this. Or they have turned from the Lord. This is what we will say. That, that, that very well may be true, but the issue goes much deeper than that. These men and women that I speak of today are our fellow soldiers. Amen. Someone said that the Christian army is the only army that shoots its own wounded. Wow. I'll say that again. Wow. The Christian army is the only army that shoots its own wounded. Mm -hmm. We cannot look at our brethren who are often described as inactive and assume that they are all in the same condition. I want you to consider four different conditions that are out there. Some may be A-W-O-A. Absent without leave. Right. AWOL is defined as being away from your military duties without permission, but with the intention of returning. Right. There are some who were once in the heat of the battle, fighting the good fight of faith, but for some reason or another, they decided that they needed to step away from the battle. Maybe they were weary from the fight. Maybe something enticed them to leave the battlefield and they put down their arm and walked away from the fight. They never intended to stay away, but they walked away with their arm. And they may be lying somewhere wounded right now. Maybe they were captured and, and are now being held by the enemy. Either way, they are no longer fighting beside us. And they are in danger. The second one we want to consider, some are deserters. It's sad, but it's true. This is the abandonment of duty and post without permission, and it is done with the intention of not returning. When Paul was instructing Timothy about the fighting battles for the Lord, he encouraged him to cling to the faith in Christ and to keep his conscience clear. Then he tells Timothy about two men who deliberately violated their consciences. Their names were Hymenus and Alexander. Paul said that they had shipwrecked their faith. And unfortunately, there are some who began to walk with the law and have made the conscious decision to turn away from him. The third one I want you to consider is the MIA. Missing in action. 
This is a casualty classification for those who are reported missing during active service. They may have been killed, they may only be wounded, and have become a prisoner of war or deserted. They, there are many of our missing members who could be described as MIA. They are gone, and we really don't know what happened. My question to you, do we just write them off? Or should we go and look for them? The last one I want us to consider, some are prisoners of war. Prisoner of war is one who is held captive by the enemy during an immediate uh, after an armed conflict. Christian soldiers face an intense battle every day. Many times enemies surround them and overpowers them. They are taken captive and held prisoners of war. We have missing members in this church who are on the battlefield fighting the good fight and, and for some reason they have been captured by the enemy. Perhaps they didn't put on the whole armor of God. Many on the battlefield today uh, uh, and have maybe they have forgotten the sword of the spirit. Some may not uh, have been all used of their defensive armor and they have been wounded and making it easier for the enemy to capture them. We must also address the fact that some of these POWs were outnumbered because they were left to fight alone. Mm. Whatever the situation is, our fellow soldiers are absent from the fight. Sometimes we find ourselves out there battling. And then we feel like we're all alone in the battle. And we decided, we make up in our mind, I might as well succumb before this thing kills me. <laughs> our people are wounded. Some have been captured. Some out there are still hurting. Some out there are really dying. I just want to serve the church notice. It's our responsibility. To do all that we can to retrieve them and see them being restored to the full spiritual health that they need to be in. Not only should we desire to see them restored, we also need to see them and have need of them on the battlefield, fighting with us. Inactive church members are not the enemy. Help us, preacher. They're not the enemy. They are our brothers and sisters in Christ. These men and women are more than just fellow soldiers. Let us not forget that they are our family. We will never succeed in retrieving our fallen soldiers and our sisters by negotiating with the enemy. So what do we do, Elder Fuller? How can we help our fallen comrade? I believe we can see the proper response from our scripture reading today. Go back to the scripture. Turn to Genesis chapter 4 as we consider just a few things. No soldier left behind. Here we read that Lot was captured by his and his possessions were seized. We learned as children the story. That thing. I'm going to be honest with you. I have never read this story until Bible book. And as I begin to read this story, I begin to paint a picture in my mind. And I just want to say, notice what it said. And I want y'all to go back to chapter 13 real quickly. Because I want you to understand exactly what was going on. And it said, and Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them. That they might dwell together, for their substance was great, yeah. by the Lord, so that they could not dwell together. Have y'all noticed when we were poor, we used to hang out together? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Anybody remember that? Yeah. We couldn't afford to go out, so we just hung together. Everybody potluck. We, you bring a dish, and we bring a dish, and they bring a dish, and everybody had something to eat. We had a good time. Amen. Yeah. But notice in this story how, how Lot and, and, and Abram began to gather a whole lot of things. Yeah. Cattle, gold, silver. Yeah, that Bible bowl is working. Now. <laughs> you got to be there. Y'all got to understand. But check this out. When they got all of these things, they found themselves having other type of problems. Their herdsmen, locked herdsmen, begin to argue with Abram's herdsmen and say, that's mine, that's mine. And they see a lot of selfishness going on. Right. Being the wise man that Abram was, he, he said to Lot, we need to just separate. Yeah. You go, I'm going to let you choose, Lot, to the left or to the right. If you choose right, I'll go left. If you choose left, I'll go right. 
Bible lets us know that Lot looked over and he saw all the towards Sodom, how everything just looked real pretty. He said, I want to go over there. Be careful. Be careful about the choices you make. Oh, it looks good. Now, I want y'all to notice something. Notice something. The Bible said that he went near Sodom. I mean. Yeah. But after a while, I began to read, he was in Sodom. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Church folk, beware of out here playing with the devil. Right. Well, I'm just hanging right at the edge. And you can find yourself right in the middle of it all. That's right. Go back and read. Lot took a long look at the well water, fertile plains of the Jordan Valley. He then took his flocks and servants and moved near Sodom. Like I said, he found out himself that he was in Sodom. Look at verse 13 of chapter 13. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Yeah. Have y'all seen Sodom around here local? People's mind on evil continually. There are several things that we must understand concerning our brethren that are missing. Who are captured or injured on the battlefield. Let's begin with fact number one. Write this down. The time for action is now. Yeah. Yeah. Look at verse 14 of chapter 14. It said, and when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants. We find in verse 13 that they came, one that had escaped and told Abram what happened. Abram didn't delay, and, and this was not a time to procrastinate because his loved one was in danger. He gathered his men together, and he sought to retrieve his captive loved one. Church, there's no shortage of fallen and captured soldiers from God's army. They are our brothers and sisters. They are our parents. They are our spouses. They are our children. They are our friends. They are in the hands of the enemy. And are facing great danger. The fact that they are in prison. Number one is bad enough. But the enemy seeks to torture those who are in captivity. While there is no shortage of fallen soldiers. There is often a shortage of those with the desire. That is willing to go in and get them. Second thing I want you to consider. As soldiers we must be prepared. The Bible says Abram armed his trained servants. They didn't have time to get ready. These were minute men. You drop a hat, let's get it on. The Bible lets us know that Abram gathered the, the trained men together and he just let them know, I'm going to get my stuff back. Mm. Let me just share something real briefly. A lot of us have left our children to themselves. But they grown now. They still the children. It's time for us to go into the enemy's camp and get our stuff back. We have left our children to the prey of the enemy. I told y'all last time I spoke, I'm going to get my children back. Let me just share what we have begun to do. Every Sabbath, we, we have a group text with all family members that we'll, we'll start it out. Somebody will start over here and they say, Happy Sabbath. <laughs> then the text begins to, uh, each member of the family begins to text and, and tell how things are going. They will make jokes about the other. And, and we will all, at the end of the conversation, we will let them know you need to be in God's and give God his time today. Amen. Amen. Over in California, in Oklahoma, yeah. in Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Man, speak. Y'all see my beautiful wife over there? <laughs> Richard, turn the camera over there. Too. Yeah. <laughs> she gonna get me later. But until then, I'm in good grace today, man. <laughs> but too many of us have allowed our children to make certain choices. Right. Yeah, man. Oh, they grown. Mm -hmm. They're entitled to make their choice. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Richard. But are you or have you stopped praying for oh, them? 